March 21st, 2025. The Pentagon briefing room fills with cameras and journalists. President Donald J. Trump then walks to the podium. Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth and Air Force Chief of Staff General David Alvin were both standing beside him when the announcement dropped. Boeing wins the Next Generation Air Dominance contract. The jet gets a name. F-47, America's first sixth-generation stealth fighter, funded with $20 billion, the largest fighter award in decades. Winston Churchill said it back in the 1940s. If a country doesn't control the skies, it's gambling with its own freedom and independence. Every war since World War II has proved him right. Desert Storm, Kosovo, Iraq, the side that owned the air wrote the ending before ground troops unpacked their gear. However, that advantage doesn't come cheap, and right now it's more expensive than ever. So why does America need another fighter when the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning are already flying combat missions across half the planet? The F-117 Nighthawk was introduced in the 1980s with faceted skin and sharp angles. It slipped through Iraqi air defenses in 1991 as a shadow penetrating enemy lines. Then came the F-22 Raptor in the 2000s. Faster, meaner, built to dogfight and win before the enemy even knew the engagement started. After that, the F-35 Lightning brought sensor fusion and data sharing to every pilot's helmet display. Three jets, three generations, each one made the previous king of the skies look obsolete. But here's the thing, the threat didn't stand still. China's J-20 Mighty Dragon is no longer just a propaganda poster. It is flying combat air patrols over disputed islands in the South China Sea, Russia's Su-57 Felon entered limited service. And even if production numbers stay low, the design signals intent. Additionally, there are air defense networks underneath long-range surface-to-air missiles that reach out 250 miles, passive sensors that track heat signatures without lighting up a single radar dish, space-based reconnaissance watches every runway in real time. Fifth-generation jets still work. However, the margin for error got thinner than aircraft aluminum. As a result, the Air Force had to fund NGID. The requirement stopped being just a faster jet. The requirement became a system that owns information, stretches endurance, and spreads sensing across multiple platforms in a combat theater. Pacific distances demand answers. Geography writes the rules. The Indo-Pacific theater stretches thousands of miles. Bases west of Guam are scarce and exposed outposts. Tankers hang back outside missile range, which means fighters burn fuel just getting to the fight. If a jet has a 600 nautical mile combat radius, it's refueling twice before even seeing the target. That eats time and also eats combat effectiveness. The Air Force ran the numbers and didn't approve of what came back. Fifth gen jets would struggle against integrated air defenses that combine long range missiles, layered radars, and cyber attacks into a lethal package. China's expanding missile coverage can hit airfields, carriers, and support assets before the first aircraft even spools up its engines. As a result, the requirement became a fighter that can fly farther, survive longer, and command a team of autonomous drones while executing the mission, then came God. The program started as a simple F-22 replacement. Then it evolved into something bigger, a family of systems, one manned fighter at the core commanding multiple collaborative combat aircraft acting as scouts, missile trucks, decoys, and electronic warfare platforms. Advanced sensors pulling data from space, sea, and air. Secure communications tie it all together. The goal advanced from being air superiority alone. The goal became battle space control. March 21st, 2025. The Air Force picks Boeing over Lockheed Martin in what had to be the aerospace equivalent of a heavyweight championship. Bout Air and Space Forces magazine reported the decision came down to the best overall value. That's Pentagon speak for cost, schedule confidence, and industrial capacity wrapped into one assessment. Boeing hadn't won a new Air Force fighter contract since the Boeing P 26P shooter back in the 1930s. Everything after that came through the 1997 merger with McDonnell Douglas, the F-15 Eagle, the F-A-18 Super Hornet. Inherited lines, proven platforms, but not Boeing's original clean sheet design. 
The F-47 changes that equation. The name itself carries weight. It honors the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, the rugged fighter bomber that escorted bombers over Europe and pounded ground targets across the Pacific during World War II. It's worth noting that it also nods to 1947, the year the U.S. Air Force became an independent service. Now add the drones. Collaborative Combat Aircraft, CCAs. These aren't tiny quadcopters from a hobby shop. They are jet-powered autonomous wingmen. Each one costs between 20 and 27 million dollars. The Air Force wants to field 1,000 or more eventually. They'll carry sensors, weapons, jamming pods, and decoys. They'll fly ahead of the F-47 into high threat zones as forward reconnaissance elements. They'll relay targeting data back. They'll absorb the first wave of missiles if things go sideways. The F-47 coordinates them through sensor fusion. Onboard computing pulls data from the jet's own radar, from the CCAs, from satellites, from nearby ships and aircraft artificial intelligence helps sort targets, predict threats, and manage the swarm. The pilot's job shifts from stick and rudder to mission command. The role becomes directing a tactical operation across hundreds of miles of hostile airspace. Its weapons stay internal when stealth matters. AIM-260, Joint Advanced Tactical Missiles for Long-Range Air-to-Air -air Kills, Small Diameter Bombs for Precision Strikes. When stealth isn't required, external racks triple the payload. Let's talk risk without sugarcoating it. First, cost. At 300 million per jet, the Air Force is buying capability, but fewer jets. The service wants 185 plus F-47s. That's the minimum to replace the F-22 fleet one for one. If the price climbs, the buy shrinks. Fewer jets means longer gaps between patrols. Longer gaps mean enemies get windows of opportunity. Second, technology integration. Combining an adaptive engine, wideband stealth, long-range secure communications, high-density computing and drone teaming all at once is complex. Each piece works in the lab. Making them work together in a combat jet under stress is harder than expected. Third, industrial pressure. Boeing needs to hire, train, and keep thousands of workers in St. Louis. The IM contract rejection in July 2025 showed how fragile that balance is. Labor disputes delay programs. Delayed programs cost money. Cost overruns shrink orders. Fourth, the engine timeline. End gap slips to 2030. Accept an interim engine or hold the jet. Either way, the schedule's at risk. Fifth, the competition. China's state media released clips of what they claim is a sixth-generation prototype. Grainy footage. No confirmed specs. Yet the signal's clear. Beijing's moving. The People's Liberation Army Air Force sets records for, for air and sea operations around Taiwan. The pace is rising. The F-47 isn't flying yet. The clock's ticking. Step back and look at the bigger battlefield. The F-47 represents a shift in how air forces think about combat. Older generations focused on the platform faster jet, tighter turn radius, better missile. The F-47 flips that script. The platform matters, but the network decides the fight. Victory comes from being first, deciding first, and shooting first, often with weapons fired from another platform hundreds of miles away. That's why the jet commands CCAs. That's why it links to satellites and surface ships. That's why sensor fusion and AI sit at the center of the design. This isn't just building a fighter. This is building a node in a kill web that stretches from space to the sea floor. Russia's air and missile campaigns against Ukrainian cities in 2025 showed what massed attacks deliver. Waves of drones, cruise missiles, hypersonic weapons. Similarly, Ukraine's deep strikes on Russian oil infrastructure showed what reach and persistence can accomplish even against a larger force. The South China Sea intercepts showed how crowded and tense the air-sea arena is getting. None of those events is end good. However, they prove the need better range, better sensors, better teaming. All three are required to survive in contested airspace. The blueprints ready, contracts signed, and Boeing's St. Louis plant is gearing up. The only big question left is the engine. Will the Air Force move ahead with temporary ones or wait for the NGAP? That choice will shape the next two years. The F-47's success also depends on how fast its drone wingmen get certified and ready for combat.
Meanwhile, China's pace in air and sea operations keeps the pressure high, reminding everyone why this jet matters. If the F-47 delivers on range, stealth, and control, it could redefine modern air combat. If the engine or costs slip, production slows and risks rise. The Air Force has placed its bet. Now it's up to Boeing to make it fly. Own the range, own the network, own the first shot. That's how the F-47 keeps the skies American.